pumping Hawaii, fun surfing the South Bay, the Gulf. Then you head on over to Europe and there's just tons of waves there as well. For a storm to stay intact and travel that far and present that surf to all those different areas is really special to watch. El Nino in the winter in the Northern Hemisphere, we usually think about powerful storms, heavy rain, XL surf in the North Pacific. But why do we see stormy weather and large surf during those strong climatic events that come around roughly once a decade? The answer is it's a storm track. It's a strong El Nino's calling card. The jet stream drops south and creates a runway for storms, so to speak. Uh, and at the end of January, just as the Lexus Pipe Pro was, was waiting to kick off the season, we saw a classic El Nino storm spin up in the Western Pacific. This everlasting storm went on to make a roughly two week journey across the Pacific, over North America and through the Atlantic Ocean and it sent swell to nearly every stretch of coast on this side of the equator and really rain or snow to every bit of land in its path as well. So this is the story of the 12,000 mile El Nino storm. Yeah, the storm really first popped on our radar as it was pushing off of Japan. It actually dropped quite a bit of snow in, in northern Japan. A little tidbit that we hear often is uh, snow in Japan sets up quality surfer pipe a few days later, and that's exactly what we saw. We saw the storm push off over the North Pacific, set up a really nice fetch aimed at Hawaii. So it's something that we are monitoring for uh, a quality start to the Lexus Pipe Pro. is always inviting and uh, um, you know it's it nice to get a good kickoff day like the, today with some eight ten foot waves and and uh, good wind. I get this thing when I paddle out here I just get so excited when the waves are good I just like want the, the very best wave. The storm system weakened a little bit north of the islands and then really set up nicely deepened as it was off the US west coast the Channel Islands and Point Conception really limit the amount of size that we see from swells that are more northwesterly in direction. Uh, El Nino bringing that storm track further south really opens this up to the potential to see stronger, more westerly swells. Uh, those stronger, more westerly swells are really what drives solid surf for Southern California. One of the things that really sets up a lot of times quality surf in the South Bay is when the storm system arrives at the same time as the swell. So you're also gonna have suddenly wind swell in the mix, there's gonna be westerly swell, it's gonna be a pretty jumbled swell overall. It's gonna help really break up shape for a place that's really more known for closeouts and quality peaks. It was the, the kickoff of just a classic storm cycle for Southern California. We dropped feet of snow in the Sierras. Uh, it was actually the storm system that really started to blow out the road at San Onofre, unfortunately. It opened the floodgates. Generally, during El Nino, we'll see that the storm track shift further south into California. Um, that's just what we saw as this storm moved through. And now what that also does is it helps the storm system kind of pass below the Rockies instead of get shredded by them. It's continuing to tap moisture from the Pacific as it makes its way into the Gulf of Mexico. And then as it reemerges, it's still quintessentially the same storm system. So we had an El Nino influence, Southern Stream Storm. When the storm first showed up, uh, it moved through Texas and into the Northern Gulf. On its way through, sent some surf to the Panhandle region of North Florida. Then the lows shifted to the Atlantic, sending surf down to the South Florida region and really to much of the Florida coast as well. Anytime we see a low move across the state and park, what I like to call kind of the slot zone, we get a little excited. So we definitely had this on our radar.
storm is there, the winds are there, and you're looking at less than a day. So it happens fast. These South Florida events happen very, very quick. Also send some swell along the Outer Banks, a little pop of swell up into the Northeast U.S. And really fairly slow mover overall, so this allowed it to continue sending um, some swell and good surf. Now the storm wasn't done, it moved away from us out to the east-northeast, reinvigorated, reached hurricane force strength in the Caribbean swell window, and brought a front deep into the Caribbean region. That's very much an El Nino signature. I mean, widespread, well overhead surf, up to two times plus overhead when it peaked. And the storm just kept on tracking across the Atlantic, moving over to the eastern side of the Atlantic, setting swell that way. So um, quite a few places have been touched by this um, long lasting low. Large parts of um, Europe had already been pumping when this, this storm came on the radar. On, on its own, it would probably go unnoticed, but the fact that it traveled you know, across two oceans and, and made it into the Atlantic pretty much intact. And in fact, it re-intensified enough to uh, look like it was going to produce a solid swell for the Canaries. North Africa has some swell going into, into Portugal. And with a high pressure building down there, um, conditions were great when the swell came in. There's a bit more rain and wind further north, but still, you know, there were some clean waves for a time. It's very rare to see all the elements of an El Nino encapsulated in one storm. But fortunately this year, the storm that traveled over 12,000 miles did exactly that, all the while connecting surfers around the world, whether they knew it or not. 